Yep, actually turned on the mic this time. Sorry about that. Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes, you, the person that stubbed their toe on a ladder while trying to avoid some cat sick and then stepped in said cat sick, thus rendering the entire acrobatic performance to avoid it completely pointless. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And today we have Chris Larkin for their suggestion of 10 video game franchises that need to change now. Calm down, Chris. I mean, I know it's quite a statement, but now. Yes. All right. Just chill out, dude. We are going to be talking about franchises that need to change. No, just keep it calm now because of the fact that a lot of franchises either they tried to be the next big thing and kind of failed or basically have been resting on their laurels for so long that they've become stagnant and what we're here to do today is revitalize all of these franchises the only way we know how by yelling into a camera in your girlfriend's kitchen so with this in mind i'm jules this is whatculture.com and these are 10 video game franchises that need to change now also, you know the draw by now. Say hello to me here in the live chat and also put your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comments section below. But until then, let's get on with that list, shall we? Number 10, Clock Tower. Now, this one might feel a little bit out of the blue, seeing as the last Clock Tower game came out in... 2002, but trust me, there is so much potential with this franchise that has just been left sitting on the table, and daddy's hungry. And arguably the reason that the last Clock Tower game that came out in 2002 failed-ish was arguably because the series went too far away from its roots, and closer to an almost Silent Hill sort of feeling. Not that that is a bad game to try and ape, but it gave you this increasing ability to fight back against the creeps and ghouls that you faced throughout your adventure. Now, while this is cool conceptually, it it's totally against what Clock Tower is all about, which is basically run, run, run. Being able to kill that which chases you does remove some of the fear somewhat, so therefore going back to its roots would actually probably be the best thing for this franchise as a whole. Although an approach like this might make it run the risk of being called the Dark Souls of Horror. Seriously, the Dark Souls of X is pretty much the most commonly used reviewer term ever. We're guilty of it too, we know. But a game that has all the potential of deaths around every corner and learning from your mistakes could be the survival horror that the next generation of consoles and PC definitely needs. Number nine, Dead Rising. Okay, my friends, let's get real right now. I love the Dead Rising franchise. However, it definitely goes like this. Dead Rising 1. Yes! Dead Rising 2. Yes! Dead Rising 2 off the record. Mm, daddy like! Dead Rising 3. Dead Rising 4. It definitely went downhill, didn't it? As the franchise went on. They brought back Frank West, but they didn't bring back his original voice actor. That should have been the immediate sign that something was amiss. Then they got rid of psychopaths. I'm not I'm just not gonna rag on Dead Rising 4. We all know what a mess it was, which is why it can't end like this. The series needs to be resurrected again, but definitely just get rid of all of that absolute tosh. Take it back to what made this game special. Aggressive time limits, aggressive characters, aggressive finger pointing, all of that. And you will make this egg very happy. Number eight, Banjo-Kazooie. Watching Banjo-Kazooie slide into sheer mediocrity was utterly depressing. It's almost as depressing as a song that I've written for this week, which actually will mark a significant change in how to use your own adventure is going to go forward. For you see, the flooring is being installed next door in my new studio, and no, that's not a metaphor for me going to the toilet, and I will be moving out of this beloved kitchen and saying goodbye to the yellow wall. So I wrote this special song that I've totally not just made up off the top of my head, and it's called Goodbye, Yellow Wall. Osley, will you join me for this last dance? <laughs> I will join you, brother. James, are you even still alive? Oh, that's a shame. Anyway, let's sing about this yellow wall. Goodbye, yellow wall. 
I adored the way you looked behind me. Oh, yellow wall, you were always there. When I was shouting out into the distance or just sipping on my tea, oh, yellow wall, I adore the way that you hung my Dynamaxian wood ocean world picture, oh, yellow wall, I love the fact that I've got a cork table that no one can see, which I think is really impressive in this room, oh, yellow wall, no one will ever replace you. Except my new studio, which is looking pretty bitching, but that'll have to be in part two. Oh, yellow wall. Cheers, Gavin. I mean, thank you. Cheers, Gavin. I'm so glad that the the mug didn't break then. I just had a really bad feeling it would smash and go everywhere. Anyway, yes, uh, Banjo Kazooie. Let's talk about that then. First game was fantastic. The second game was even better. And then we got this horrible slide and mismatch stuff. Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Get rid of the vehicles, bring it back. Rare is basically itching to make another game. And Microsoft is basically just saying, no, 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 no. We don't like making money. So you just sit back down. We're going to release the Rare replay box and everyone will say how great it is and amazing. And then we're going to do nothing with you. Number seven, Silent Hill. Konami, Konami, just, yeah, yeah, come here. Sweetheart, come here. Yeah, put down the pachinko machine. Come here. Right. So you see this? This, I'm hoping that Osley has just edited a Silent Hill 2 PNG inside my hands. You see this here? This is Silent Hill 2. It's an amazing survival horror game. In fact, it might actually be one of the best games in the entire series. In fact, you might say it's one of my favorite games. And say it with me, Konami and the kids at home. Of all time! Yet, take a look right there. You see that? That says Konami, you had something to do with this. Yeah, I know you're happy. So why the fuck have you done absolutely bugger all with it since? The closest that we've got to a new game coming out is a DLC for another game. What are you doing with yourself? I know that Hideo Kojima hurt you, but baby cakes, them's the bricks. Just deal with it. Number six, Bubsy. I'm not actually going to say, oh, Bubsy, you're so bad and terrible and you stink and I hate you that you shouldn't make any more games. No, no, no. In fact, I think that they should make more Bubsy games. Now, I can see a lot of you are already going, what the hell are you on about, your snowy egg? Well, just listen. They should make more games, but they should stop trying to make good games. The latest Bubsy game that came out was average at best and a slap in the sack at worst but the problem was is that they were trying to make a good game and failed and therefore will forever be rendered to just sheer mediocrity it will fade into the annals of time like that but if you make a so bad it's good game kind of like bubsy 3d then you will therefore be etched forever on the glorious Mount Rushmore of so bad they're good games, alongside deadly premonition and big rigs over the road racing. Don't you want that for yourself, Bubsy? So what you've got to do in order to be good is just get worse. Number five, Assassin's Creed. No, 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 before you get all your Desmond pants in a twist, I love the Assassin's Creed franchise. It's an experience unlike anything else. It's just a shame that the experience has become exactly the same game after game for year after year. Now that wasn't too much of a problem when they were innovating and doing new stuff, but it makes every new release that comes out feel like you've already trodden these paths before. For example, when Valhalla was announced, I was so excited. I was a huge fan of God of War. I was a huge fan of just Viking mythology and getting all of that involved into an Assassin's Creed game. And after they'd done Odyssey, I was expecting to see loads more monsters and mythological beasts. Fantastic. But when I saw the gameplay footage for it, it just felt like every single Assassin's Creed game that I'd ever seen up until that point. It literally was a person scaling up to a rooftop and doing the whole surround uh, scanning thing and I was like I've done this game I've played this game a, a million times before and it puts me off I want innovation coming out of the Assassin's Creed franchise not stagnation where they basically are just gonna rest on their laurels until the entire thing just dies of diminishing returns and this point of criticism comes from a place of love not hate so Assassin's Creed pull your socks up and let's swan dive into a better future number four Fallout. So for a time, being a Fallout fan was the absolute best. We had the greatest games, we had an amazing community, and we had mod support out the ears. Yet, unfortunately, this is not a happy story. 
For while this franchise was in every other respect blessed by Slime Jesus. That's that's it, sir. No, sorry, you're gonna have to go back up again because I'm, I'm talking about Fallout 76. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. It was kind of like this. Imagine that you're at a house party with all of your best friends, you're having a great time. In fact, it's so good that people that you haven't seen for years come from overseas and they're bringing stuff like craft beers with them. And they let you sample some, it's just, oh, delicious, chef kiss. But then there's a knock at the door. You go and answer it, it's Uncle 76. Reeking of booze, cigarette stains on his shirt, just burnt holes straight through to the skin, his puckered, very, very white, horrible, manky flesh underneath. His clothes don't fit him, he's got a bit of sick in his mouth. But he stumbles his way into the party, he comes in and kicks the coffee table straight away. Boom, there goes some snacks and drinks onto the floor. Oh, 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 don't mind me, he says, accidentally getting into people's business, knocking over even more drinks as he attempts to clean it up. Oh, there he goes. He's dropped his cheap bottle of scotch on the floor and it's smashed. The music stops as people try to gather around the mess to clear things up. He's waving his arms, saying, no, 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 there's still life in the party yet. Don't cancel the party yet. It's great. It's, we're all having a good time. But his waving arm has gone rogue. And he's hit somebody in the face, clean straight in the face with his discount Rolex, his Relox. Broken someone's nose. Everyone's screaming, going, what is going on now? He starts getting agitated because he thinks he's done no wrong. He thinks that a fight has broken out. He doesn't have a clue what's going on. He's not compass mentis. People try to restrain him because he's clearly getting dangerous now. He thinks that everyone's trying to fight him. Just holding his hands behind his back, they try and escort him to the door. He's pulled his t-shirt off in between these points because he thinks he's on an episode of Jerry Springer. As they gently but forcibly eject him from the party, saying, We do not want this, but that we do not want this, Fallout 76. He's so angry that he f himself in protest. I have no idea where I was going with this story. Just keep the multiplayer, but what were you doing? You're actually reversing it into a game that we kind of wanted, but you did it in such a roundabout way, Bethesda, that you've killed all love for this. Stop trying to be an MMORPG with all of the crazy microtransactions first and put the consumer front and center. We got you here. We will be the ones that keep you there. Sort it out. Number three, Dead Space. So Dead Space was a series that, despite appearing on this list, didn't actually need to change, because much like my younger brother's toe when I was deciding to build a shed in the yard, it absolutely nailed down the survival horror. DIY. Never again. So why the hell did things shift from asshole clenching fear to a full-on action title with the third instalment? Well, I got one word for you, brothers. Money. Yes, EA for some reason decided that people didn't like the thing that they had proved with their wallets that they did like and instead wanted them to slog through another third person action title with horror bits stapled on. And since then, it's just been all quiet on the western front for the series, so what better time than now than to bring it back but with a little twist. So here's the pitch for Dead Space 4. You start as an action soldiery type. You start fully trained. You're not the person like Isaac Clarke was where it was a rags to bloody rag story. This time round, you are the action hero that EA clearly wanted you to be in the third game. But things break. All of your equipment actually degrades over time. So you start out really strong, but it gets worse and worse and worse until at the very end, you have to pick up the old trusty pistols and batter your way through the necromorphs as best you can. That would be a very interesting take. Basically inverting the entire course of the trajectory of the series because you've gone from an engineer who builds things in order to get by to a soldier who has to basically rely on basic duct tape to get through the day. Now that is a game I play. Number two, WWE games. The WWE games have the potential to be great. In fact, there is no better experience than playing like Here Comes the Pain or Just Bring It. Those are absolute choice games. But the problem is, is they haven't had a good hit now for years. And with Battlegrounds coming out, that's not them trying anything new. That's them just going, what other old system have we got? Oh, WWE Superstars, is it? Should we just do that again with that? It's going to be a one and done thing, my friends. They need to take time out and rebuild things from the ground up. They are still using animations that Jeff and Matt Hardy shot for the PS2 games and even a PS1 game, I believe. That shows you how little has been done to the franchise despite its graphical overhauls. 
it needs to stop and it needs to take itself off the market for a good few years to do it right. Because WWE fans were opinionated to the extreme. And yet, even we deserve better than this. And number one, Sonic the Hedgehog. So strap in folks, because it is about to get real. Now, in my other videos, I seem to have generated this anti-Sonic mantra, and that's just not the case. I love Sonic when he's good, he's just had some very bad games. Or, to be more specific, he's just been really unlucky with them. Because what's happened now is that there have been so many poorly crafted Sonic games that many are understandably cautious to not want to pick up the next instalment, lest that they have paid big bucks for the next version of Sonic 06. So the change that they need to make is just make good games. I know that that seems utterly ludicrous to just be like, we'll just make good games, but they've proven that they can do it. It's just that what it is, is that Sega, they rush with these ideas. They go, yes, this is it. This is a brand new idea. Refine what you have before you move on to something else. They do basically slash and burn affair. They just go, right, okay, didn't work, get rid of it all. No, 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 there was some promise in this. Definitely not with Big the Cat and the Frog thing, but a lot of other stuff could actually be fleshed out to something better. But no, they just go, right, they didn't like it, therefore they must hate it. That's not the case, because a lot of us, we actually really love Sonic, and we just want to see him do well. That being said, no to Sonic R2. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 flagging video game franchises that need to change now. Hope that you enjoyed that, my friends, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, as well as any other suggestions that you might have for next week's episode. And remember, say goodbye to the Isle of War, because next week, things are going to be a little bit different, let me tell you. But if you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can go to Live and Let's Dice, it's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. But before I go, my friends, I just want to talk to you about something that actually is quite close to my heart and it's something that I've been dealing with quite recently. So we talked today about flagging video games that needed to change. And I just want to talk to you very quickly on the concept of burning out, uh, especially right now with everything being in a sort of flux of are we open, are we not again? A lot of people are spending time indoors and a lot of people are being forced to work in their homes and it's creating a lot of um, mental issues that I believe can cause a horrible amount of burnout, especially if you're doing a creative job. It can be very hard to separate your home space from your workspace, but I'm just saying to you, this is all a matter of perspective. If you can step back and take a look at your life and realize that a lot of energy is going into one area of it that can't be changed necessarily by just throwing a sheer amount of weight of effort into it, then that's okay. It allows you perspective to look at your life in different ways, to know when to ask for help, to know when you need support, or even just to say, this isn't actually for me. And I hope that if you are experiencing the same thing that I definitely have been, like working constantly, the content never sleeps and doing it in your own home means that you're creating a weird dichotomy of like, am I working? Am I at home? Do I need to be working whenever I sit down at my computer? I hope that you are finding balance in that. Because remember, despite everyone saying don't go outside, just go for a walk, clear your head, talk to your friends and family, make sure that they understand because there's nothing worse than you bubbling underneath the surface and not being able to express it. It might seem like I'm rambling a little bit here, but just these are the key main points. Look after yourself, make sure that you recognize signs of burning out, and remember it is okay to take the foot off the gas every once in a while. I care about you and want you to do well, all right? Because you're a massive ledge. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Peace out.